What's up guys? The Danish men's singles player Hans Christian Vittinghus recently created an Instagram post to go over all the changes he would like to see for badminton in the new year. In this video, I'm going to react to the changes and hopefully BWF looks at them to try and improve the sport. Before this video starts, I would really appreciate it if you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Going into the post then, Vittinghus mentions that he hopes these changes are looked at and encourages discussions to take place about how the Badminton World Federation can improve on some of the topics that he talks about below. Let's get into his first point, which would be free to change. The first one is about reopening the world rankings as soon as possible. Vittinghus mentions that results back in 2019 still count towards the current world rankings that clearly don't reflect the current rankings since they were three years ago. He also says that it's extremely unfair for young players to climb up the rankings since there are so many current players that have lots of points from tournaments they played in years ago. Also, there is no qualifying events for BWF World Tour 750 or higher events. This means all the players with lots of points can keep entering these tournaments and players who haven't played in three years won't lose any of their points. This makes it so difficult for younger players playing in smaller tournaments to close the gap on the these types of players. All of the countries worldwide are mostly playing again, except China. Vittinger states that the points from three years ago should have been maintained just so that Chinese players can keep a higher ranking. To be honest, I completely agree with this, and there are a lot of tournaments now where players can compete in to earn points. If you look at the world rankings, for example, there are so many high-ranked players that either don't compete anymore, like the men's doubles player Yuta Watanabe and Hiroyuki Endo, or players that have been in really bad form lately, but are still ranked so highly. His next point is about giving them slow shuttles at big events. This is because it encourages a slow and patient game, and it also means it's more of a physical battle rather than a tactical one. This is just not how the game is meant to be played, and it really slows down the game and makes it less interesting. This is something that I completely agree with as well, to be honest. I think that slow shuttles really affects how the game is played, and as a spectator, I don't really want to see like men's doubles players just constantly clearing it, because they can't really smash it through their opponents. Also, the shuttles should be tested to be a certain speed. I don't know why the tournament organisers don't just test like a bunch of shuttles before the day starts or even during the day as well, just to make sure the shuttles that they're using are perfectly fitting into the correct category of speed. His next point is that he thinks that draws for tournaments should be one or two days before the event starts, compared to what they currently are, which can be weeks before the event. This means that top seeded players can often pull out of the tournament, which can lead to a really unfair draw, which is often just luck for a lot of players. Whereas if you did it one or two days before, then you know the players that are likely not going to pull out and you can have a fair draw with all of the players uh, that are gonna be at the event. I can see why this could be a definite advantage, especially for the players, as they know exactly who's going to be playing and it creates a fair draw, which I like to be honest. However, I do actually quite like the draw being like a week or two before as a fan, just so I can see who's going to be playing each other without like waiting like a day before the event. But I can see this definitely be an advantage in terms of having a fair draw. He says that this has been done in table tennis and works really well for years now. I would like to see BWF look at this and potentially try it out for at least for a few tournaments to see if it's better or not. Changing the qualifying rules for the World Tour Finals to the top 8 ranked players in the world at November. He says that the World Tour Finals is supposed to be the best players in the world competing and not just some of the most active players. Currently, if you're really active in badminton, you earn a lot of points, even if you don't necessarily win a lot of the tournaments you play in. And these points will then allow you to enter the World Tour Finals. Vittingus is saying that it shouldn't be the most active players, instead it should be the best players. He says that he thinks that there should be about 10 to 12 tournaments of the year that give you points to enter the World Tour Finals. This means that players that do the best at these events will then qualify for it. The World Tour Finals is meant to be the pinnacle of the badminton tournaments of the calendar year, so it should consist of the best players in the world. However, we have seen lately, it doesn't always, isn't always the case, and we've actually seen a mix of players from just some of the most active as well as some of the best, which shouldn't always be, shouldn't be the case really. I think as well for the fans, they want to see the World Tour Finals as being the top eight best players in the world and best pairs coming up against each other to win the tournament. I think this is a really good point and should be implemented. 
hopefully the BWF can look into this and maybe recognise like 10 to 12 of the tournaments of the year to be um, provide points for the World Tour Finals so that it includes the best players in the world and that, so that players know which tournaments will then go towards the World Tour Finals rather than just trying to enter as many as they can to try and get the qualifying points even if they don't actually do that well in them. The next improvement that he mentions is that he thinks that they should change the money structure in the World Tour Finals. This is because the current structure pays so well, even if you lose everything, that it discourages players to pull out of the event because they will lose their money. This means that players that are injured might just turn up for like a few points and then just pull out injured just to get the money. His suggestions are that there should be a fixed amount for qualifying based on which position you qualify in, either world ranking of 1, 2, 3, etc. This is paid out regardless of your participation or not in the World Tour Finals. He thinks there then should be then a bonus per group stage win in straight games, a smaller bonus for group stage win in three games, an even smaller bonus for group stage loss in three games, and then a very small bonus for group stage loss in straight games. There should also be a bonus for then qualifying for the semi-final, a bonus for qualifying for the final, and then a bonus for winning the event. I think this is actually a really good idea as well because it means that every single game means something and a player will get more money if they win that game. So it stops players from like uh, not trying so much if they've already qualified, for example. I don't know if there should be a guaranteed payout, uh, even if they don't even participate in the event. But then I guess that's what Vittingus is mentioning about players not pulling out and just playing a couple points if they're injured just to get that money. So I do guess this sort of makes sense to stop that from happening. I do really like the idea that there's money on the line for every single game. Even if you go to three, you get some more money, which just makes it much more entertaining for the fans as well. About the World Tour Finals as well, he also thinks that there shouldn't be a maximum on the amount of players from a nation that can compete. At the moment, there's only two players from each nation that can compete in the tournament, which just makes no sense really. It should be the top eight players or pairs in the world competing against each other, regardless of their nation. It's not the Olympic Games where you need representation from multiple different countries from around the world. Instead, it's the best players against each other. It just means that players that are ranked in the top eight, but have two players that are in the same country ranked ahead of them, it means that they can't compete in the tournament and therefore lose out on prize money and also just playing in the event and having a chance of winning it. I hope BWF look into this and I just don't think that the rule really makes any sense to be honest. His next point is about the rule of removing ranking points if you withdraw against a fellow compatriot, someone from your same country. I don't really understand it too much, but I think there's a rule that removes your ranking points if you withdraw against someone from your same country. This obviously isn't really fair at all, so I completely agree with him if that's what he means, but I'm not too sure on it to be honest. It doesn't really make sense to remove ranking points if someone's injured and can't play against someone from their same country. I think a big point which he mentions here is that they need to find a solution to stop players walking on courts and just playing a few points before withdrawing because they are injured. This is really unfair for players on the waiting list that can't play in the event just because someone turns up injured and just withdraws after a few points. This either happens because a player wants to avoid a fine for withdrawing from the tournament after the draw has been made, or to get a first round entry for money or to get the rank their ranking points, which are really useful for the World Tour Finals. I think some of the suggestions which mentioned earlier would definitely help this. For example, changing the draw date to only one or two days before the event will stop players from getting fined uh, if they're injured, like a week or two before the event when the draw was out uh, how it currently is. If the event was only one or two days before, then it's unlikely an injury will occur just in that time and then they will pull out then, causing a fine. For the ranking points, a player should receive their ranking points even if they don't turn up at the event because they're injured, although they do still qualify for it. This would stop players from just turning up and playing a few points just to get the tournament points. For the money situation, Fittinger suggests that players that just qualify for the event, even if they don't turn up because of an injury, should still get the prize money, and this would stop them just playing just for the prize money. His second option is that the players that withdraw in the first match uh, should be fined the amount that they would be earning if they just played in that first round. Um, this would have to be then confirmed by a doctor um, from the tournament and not just a team doctor. 
This would mean it would be no point in just turning up and playing a few points, since you would be fined and uh, lose the amount of money that you would be getting if you just played that first round. Honestly, I quite like the second option, to prevent people from just turning up for the money, even though they're injured. Because what would be the point in just playing the first match and pulling out injured after a few points if you were going to get fined that much anyway? Moving on to his points which would cost money to do, I think this is one of the best ones to be honest about testing the speed of the shuttle. Rather than just a few random people just hitting the shuttlecock or players who clearly have like a, a, a preference in if they prefer like a faster speed or a slower speed, having like a machine which is always used at events to test the speed of the shuttlecock. This machine will then fire the shuttlecock and test if what speed shuttlecocks are required for that haul and that specific conditions. I think this would be a really good idea at just making it consistent across all of the tournaments in terms of the speed of the shuttles. His next point which would cost money to change is having one or two reserves for the World Tour Finals. These would be like the world ranked 9th or 10th top players in the world. And it would just mean that if any players pull out of the event, you have them to sub in. And this usually happens to be honest, a lot of players do pull out. This would once again achieve better competition and also better for the fans who are watching the games rather than having players pull out and just making an unfair draw and also ones where players, players would have a bye in the first round. If this could be done with paying the substitute players to attend the events, then I think this is a good idea as well. Another thing which would be really cool to add, which Fitting has mentioned, is having Hawkeye and all of the Super 1000 event courts. I definitely agree with this as well, and I think that Hawkeye is something that should be always used, especially at the big tournaments, and not just on like one court for example. It just means it is much fairer for all of the players. We've all seen really close line calls where Hawkeye has like saved the point, which can be make such a big difference, especially in close games. And also at the biggest events where prize pools are really high. We all want to see a fair competition for all of the players. In terms of technology, Fittingus then goes on to say that he thinks that there should be an instant review system for faults at the net and serve return faults. I think this would also be a really good idea as well, and I don't necessarily know why they don't do it, since when you look at, on the TV, you can go back and look at the instant review to see if it was a fault or not. I don't see why the umpires can't go and look at this themselves as well, and just have a quick review, like they do now in football for example with the VAR system. If there's the money there to do it, then of course it should be done. These are just some of the suggestions that Fitting Us has brought out in a post. And I honestly agree with pretty much every single one of them, and I think most badminton fans do. We've had some of the professional players like Anders Antonsen and Enklong Angus give their uh, support for the post that he done. Let me know in the comments if you guys agree with me and what Vittingus is saying, and if there's anything else that you think that should be changed um, that BWF should look at into the new year. Thank you for watching and have an awesome day.